Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're uh, connecting uh, from. Uh, my name is Eric Swenson. I'll be the mon moderator of this uh, webinar today, which will be covering the state of the art uh, monitoring, automation, and data analysis. Uh, we have uh, two speakers today. Uh, Miguel Angel Ayuso from Renovagy and uh, Estefania de Osma from Isatrol. And um, without further ado, I'd like uh, the two uh, presenters uh, to introduce themselves. And uh, Miguel, if you introduce yourself, then Estefania and then Miguel. When Estefania completes, uh, please begin your presentation. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Miguel Angel Ayuso. I'm the CEO of and founder of uh, Renovagi Energy Control and Systems. We are located in Madrid, uh, in San Fernando de Henares, in the surroundings of Madrid, very close to the airport. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, to talk about the state of, ta of art of uh, this important part of the PV installations. Hello, uh, I'm Estefania de Osma. I'm the research and coordinator, um, research and development coordinator at Isotrol. Um, uh, Isotrol is located in Seville, Spain, and um, I'm an engineer and with more than eight years experience in energy sector, and uh, I'm very proactive and committed to renewable energy. Thank you. Miguel, please get us started. Okay, thank you. I'm trying to to share my screen as a minute. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, we, uh, Renovagi is a company that uh, the main focus of Renovagi is the R&D and the innovation also. We, we, call, we always say that it is two big works, R&D, and the little one is the innovation, but it's the important one, okay, because it's the, 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 the where we can have uh, the solutions in the in the different industrial areas. No, uh, we the title of the presentation is innovation for PV facilities and cost reduction in capex. That is the important one in the in the in the actual situation of the solar market. And this is a presentation little uh, that is. Uh, uh, where we are, where we have done uh, the different uh, installations, some of our customers. But uh, the, to start the presentation, we put here the, the, the big problem that we can see now in the, in the solar market, the big fight between the CAPEX and the OPEX. The KPs is very important because it's the construction cost, but the OPEX should be the very important thing because it's 20 years of project and 20 years of production in the solar market. This is the important one, but uh, sometimes the EPC companies or the construction companies put more attention in the cost of the construction than in the my, my operation and maintenance of the, of the solar uh, facilities. That is uh, at, for our, you know, from our point of view is a big error. Because uh, the oh, sorry, I have some ah oh, sorry, because uh, because now in the actual situation, why now is important to to put attention in the opex or put attention in the operation and maintenance? Because if you can see in this slide, is uh, very clear that the prices from the 2007 and up to now is reducing the cost of the tariff of, of the of the price of the energy up to January of this year that were the the the, tar, the, the bid the, 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 the auction for energy were uh, 23 dollars instead 20 220 in only in only 10 or 11 years is 
too much, but the cost reduction of the facilities is also important. In, in 2007, the cost is around $7.5. Now is 0.68, it's estimated, it depends, but 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 the peak that is 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 is, is something that is incredible, but there is the, the actual situation. Uh, uh, pero, but uh, the important thing is that the PV facilities, not like the eolic, in the eolic uh, uh, solar facilities and in the installation of eolic, they put a lot of attention in the collection on in the sensors that they have in the in the in the installations. But in the solar, the, the is the opposite because now the, the, we can see that every year and every time that they construct a new facility, they are putting out sensors and the uh, field devices that is so important to do a big and a good analysis of the data. That is the, the, the important thing for the operation and maintenance. The, the PV facilities are always in complex environment. There is in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the jungle, in the middle of nowhere, and there is uh, weather, extreme temperature, and soiling, a, a lot of th different things that we have to, to, to put attention about this, no? And you have co to control, very important work, control. The PV facilities uh, has a lot of data, has a lot of data that you can see here in an example of 100 uh, megawatts facility that are every year we save more than one terabyte of uh, data. And who is doing the analysis of in the long term of this data? Nobody, because it's the cost of do, to, to do this type of analysis is very high. And then there is no money. There, with this tariff, with this bid, with this option, there is no money to do that. Uh, how we can find solutions of efficiency in a production improvement? We think that the innovation is the only way to have a better uh, control of the OPEX operation and maintenance. That is the key of, of for us, the operation and maintenance of 20 years. Uh, we think also that the granularity of the data is so important. When you have a, a, a when you have more data, you can do a better analysis of the data. Then, why the people is taking out sensors, sensors, and very important proofs on sensors in the in the facilities that don't have any sense? That the, we have and we need this data to improve and to have a better production in the solar facilities. Mm, uh, the, um, this is a, a slide that you can see after when you when 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 we, we you when we send the, the, the slides and the presentation to everybody. But uh, the question is that uh, if we are have, we're talking about a, a facility of 20 years of um, operation, then as much data we, we have of, uh, of over the, the, the fields and the devices that there is in the, in the, in the solar facilities is better. And then now the situation is changing. They are putting out. I, I'm, I'm in doing, I'm, I'm talking again, again, again about the situation of CAPEX over OPEX, but this, it's very important to talk about this. Um, it's, it's clear that uh, the, reduced, the reduction of cost uh, has uh, a, a lot of uh, things that is uh, the only possibility is to, re to reduce the cost in the solar facilities. And one of them is to use the wireless systems instead of the cable systems, because a lot of uh, different uh, installation is uh, having uh, sensors, field sensors, like trackers, like uh, combiner boxes, like temperature proofs that at uh, up to four years, uh, there is with cable, and this is a big cost for hand work, for the cable, and for a lot of things. The wireless, the wireless uh, installation and the wireless system is reducing the cost to have these important proofs at this important uh, important uh, sensor field in the installation. Uh, the second one is if we can use the wireless systems 
for the SCADA systems and the security perimeter systems. Uh, mm, when we're talking about the field sensors, how we collect the data from the field sensors, actually the people is talking about three main important uh, technologies. One is Zigbee, the other one is LoRa. LoRa is a system that is uh, thinking, uh, is um, uh, developed for IoT, Internet of Things. And the third one is very important also because it's the SAP 1 gigahertz. Uh, in this uh, table, you can see the advantage and the problem of one of, or, or, of, or, of, or for Sigby, for LoRa, and for SAP 1 gigahertz. But the important thing is that we have the solution for the field sensors in the in the PB facilities, and we don't we we don't we, we don't have the, the, we don't have to think about we are moving out the sensors because for 20 years that is very important. The data from this sensor is so important, and um, of course that uh, LoRa and Higby is a good uh, solutions, but there is solution very strong and uh, uh, absolutely thinking uh, that the solution is, 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 uh, is uh, clear that we can use in the solar facilities better than LoRa and Zigbee because the transmission distance is better, the noise, the noise immunity is better, the transmission, transmission velocity also is speed is better and the country permissions because sometimes the people forget that to use the wireless communications in some countries for example, in the Middle East, that is clear, you have to have a, a special permission to use the band to collect this data from the from the from the sensors. The wireless, the wireless, the, the, the wireless that we know that Wi-Fi is not good to use in the in the in the it's not a good idea to use in the solar facilities because uh, there is uh, the network of, for example, the network operators of the different countries. Uh, every day is in, is in the demand to stop, for example, a, a solar facility, the production of the stop, or reduce the power, or reduce the, the, the voltage, or reduce the frequency. If we do that with a, a wireless solution, maybe we can have a big, big problem because it's a critical data, it's a critical, uh, uh, it's a critical situation, like in the security systems. The people with an inhibi in, in some inhibitors can do can um, put out the cameras of the solar facilities. Then the wireless system that we know in the band of 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz is not good to use, like network, Ethernet network, or SCADA system or security system. This is the situation in the in the in the, redu the reduction of the cost is uh, important because uh, this cost uh, the, it represents around a 12 percent of uh, co reduction cost in the installation. Um, we have to, to think about again about OPEX. OPEX is so important, and the data for to manage the OPEX is extremely important. One of the one of the things that we the, the people is using is the drones. Drones to to do aerial thermography of solar panels. Uh, with this uh, technology, we can use uh, hot spot detection, panels, uh, if, the, if the panel is uh, dirty or not, or a perimeter security because, for example, we are using this for for the, the drones also for perimeter security. But if we think that how many time needs people to do in, 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 uh, a panel by panel thermography? As you can see that is maybe in a 10 megawatt, uh, 10 megawatt uh, solar installation, maybe 25 days. With a drone, we need only 30 minutes or 40 minutes. But now the, the, the target or the, the goal that we have to achieve is that now the image from uh, the drones is taken is taken in, in a low in a low time, okay. But after you, we have to send to another people to do the interpretation and do the analysis. Our target our target is try to 
to, to, to get that the drone can do the interpretation in real time. That is the, the, the new innovation that uh, could, uh, could give to the analysis size system all the data about the thermography. Um, the, th the third part of the presentation is talking about the, important, the importance of uh, to use te technologies like big data or machine learning for the analysis of the PBE facilities. Why? Because if you have one terabyte in one year of a lot of data, then you can do uh, any, any search or any query in the solar facilities with the servers that do you have in normally in the, in the solar facilities. Then you have to move to all this data to a big data uh, um, warehouse, a big data uh, technology. And then with the machine learning, uh, we have to do the analysis of the data. For this, we can have the photovoltaic monitoring data, the external data, and the operation and maintenance data. Uh, the performance uh, monitoring uh, is important because if you can do the analysis of the plant or the facility in the long term, the results that you have is absolutely incredible. We recommend uh, that the people think about this because the key is OPEX. CAPEX is very important, but the 20 years, remember, CAPEX is maybe one year, OPEX is 20 years of production. Uh, we, um, this is the situation that we take uh, uh, um, data from external sources, sources of monitoring, and uh, we can do, we don't, with this, we do uh, enterprise data lake where we can collect the information, processing the cleaning the information and after we can do the, the in the warehouse in the business warehouse area of big data and after we can do the processing of uh, dashboard and everything this uh, this is our uh, solution solution that is doing something important is uh, uh, compare how you expect how you have how you must to have this is the question you have now uh, you, you expect to have 20, 20 megawatts, now you have 19 megawatts, and you, have, you must have 21, which is, why is the difference? Why? Then you have to do analysis of the data in the long term. Uh, this, uh, I, I don't want to spend more because uh, uh, Stefania, my, the other speaker, is talking about also big data, and we are absolutely... Uh, uh, absolutely the same line, and then uh, um, the, these uh, this, the slides you can see better uh, better um, after the presentation. But in this uh, in this slide, we are doing something important. Uh, the important thing is that how we can control the problems in a solar plant, doing analysis of the data of the of the solar plants, and for that we need as much sensor field that we can have better is the improvement of the of the of the solar facility this is some examples of reports that quantify the uh, the cost uh, saving in a, a transformation center for example in one facility and then uh, or for example in this slide you can see how we can do the recommendation engine but as I mentioned before, I have my time, uh, uh, and I don't want to 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 to, uh, to do uh, to talk more more about the big data because Stefania is talking about also the big data, and then together we uh, we are we agree about everything, and then we can we can talk of the same solutions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Miguel Angel. Uh, I think that was very interesting. I encourage uh, participants to uh, ask any uh, questions. Uh, we will be answering, uh, if possible, uh, all of the questions that are raised. Um, and now, uh, Stephanie, if you could uh, uh, get ready to share your screen and begin your presentation. 
And don't forget to unmute your microphone. Hello, did you hear me properly? We can hear you. Uh, you need to share your screen in full, full uh, screen. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm doing that right. That's right? There we go, good. So, Thank you very much uh, for having me the opportunity to, to have a time slot here. And uh, thank you very much for Miguel Angel for these very good uh, introductions to the important uh, problem I'm a state of the art of, of the sector and uh, how the, 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 the things that the, the opportunity that uh, we have here today is to how to take advantage of this data information from from the PV plants to reduce uh, OPEX and for sure to ensure that the, the the new construction of plants take into consideration the potential that having more information from the uh, plant will increase uh, the business uh, model and uh, the profitability of the asset itself. So uh, just very few uh, review to explain why we are isotrol and why we are right now uh, in the sector of uh, big data analysis and, and so on. So isotrol is a global technology provider who who have a presence of worldwide. Uh, we, our main product uh, is a Bluens that uh, control and monitors renewable energy installation along the world. Uh, PV and uh, wind. We also have some biomass and thermal. Uh, mainly, uh, we have we our headquarter is in Seville in Spain. But we also have uh, office in Brazil, Argentina, Ch Chile, Chile, Mexico, United States, and United Kingdom. So you, our main client are the big utilities, and uh, and also EPCs. Who and uh, we have three main clients: the utility, the EPCs, and the asset managers, uh, the investment funds. And for them, we, we have all the product solution and lines uh, providing how to maximize. In, in one case, they need to max, maximize the OPEX because they, um, they are owner of the plants and have to maximize the profits. Okay. So Bluent itself is uh, our branch of all the SCADA monitoring system and uh, other services that we provide to renewable plants. And um, our main goal, um, main target is to increase customer profitability. And for that, we provide different tools, different solutions and, uh, and services to help them to contribute to the operational excellence. Uh, just, I, I will go very, very fast because uh, um, Miguel Angel already present you the, the problems. So at the end, we have a background on the business. In the past, a lot of uh, grants that uh, let the renewable started to pen be penetration in, in the market. Now it's um, uh, competitive. They, they are competitive, competing in price uh, with other uh, generations. And in fact, in Spain and other sector are starting to participate in the electricity wholesale market. So for them, they need to accurate the price of OPEX and uh, also be prepared for new, for new regulations that may then participate in those uh, markets. So there are new metrics due to these business evolutions. At the very beginning, they are worried about some contractual KPIs and availability. Right now, 
the they have to, the owner have to maximize productions, minimize operation and maintenance costs, and maximize both said incomes. For that, the product and the service should be ready. And uh, at the end, new solutions and services are popping up in the market. Uh, as um, Miguel Angel already introduced new solution to gather uh, information from the plant more accurate with more um, uh, uh, yeah with more that information that may you pr provide good input in uh, to maximize the opex and we are presented different services uh, how you can uh, uh, analyzing the information that the, that the um, renewable park uh, plant provide you uh, to identify what are the problems and to, to reach the solutions to minimize the OPEX and contribute to the new business models. This is uh, more or less the same. The problem that we have to solve to be prepared for services that minimize the OPEX and maximize the input, the operational excellence at all. And uh, uh, as already been mentioned, uh, the renewable assets, wind turbines, and also PV uh, PV plants have a million of signal every few seconds, and uh, SCADA monitoring system should be ready to collect and to, and to in and the the big um, value is to really. Uh, use this information to provide uh, new actions that maximize the, the impact of the production. So the SCADA system should be ready for this new opportunity. Uh, there is also uh, a problem um, well, um, in the control centers. The big utilities and the big uh, asset manager have a lot of uh, renewables plants being managed for few persons. So they need tools and services that help them to identify when and where have they starting to have problem in the assets to, to solve them uh, very early to minimize the, the loss of production. And at the end, uh, it's a chance to, for new opportunities for services that detect early deviation as a performance and take actions at all. Okay, the important things here also is to emphasize that uh, Isotrol have a, a, a knowledge in the complete value change. Um, we, we, we have solutions for SCADA, local SCADA, gather information from, from PV plants and renewable assets. We provide local SCADA solutions. We also provide control center solutions. And now, and now we have providing also this added value service based on analytics, machine learning, and big data in order to increase the knowledge of the owner of the assets to maximize the impact. Okay. So what is the asset performance diagnosis and uh, how to take value from the da da data? Uh, in the left hand, you can see the, the typical gathering information from renewable plants, renewable facility, where you connect to the facility, you take information, you storage it. And also there is, uh, this is the, the renewable site itself. There is also new sensors and new uh, internet of things. For example, the, mob the mobile phone of the operators or tablets and so on, or cameras or drones or whatever. There are different new inputs that bring you information of their assets that is important to collect them to and to take inf advanced information from them. So how Isodrol is dealing with this new opportunity is that um, we, we uh, collect all this information from the DCRN system and so uh, we storage in a different uh, cloud platform when we, when it's, ver it's necessary to, to to re review what is the data that you're gathering and to, to, uh, to clean it in order to take the most uh, information you may have 
previously Miguel Angel mentioned that uh, there are some problems sometimes with the sensor, with the time they are sending the information, some problems, communications, on the, any other uh, situation that in a reality happens. So for that, it's very important this next uh, step of uh, a specific, to have a, a specific algorithm that detect uh, problems uh, in data quality and uh, in data um, uh, blackouts and so on, to accurate it and to prepare it for analysis. Okay, then it's also very important to model the behavior of the asset itself. And uh, we also have different algorithms who uh, model the behavior, the good and bad behavior of the assets to detect uh, unsupervised performance ratings, to detect any deviation that may have happened. Then there is also a very important block that uh, it's not all important to detect that there's a deviation been happening in your asset, but also that there were and uh, where is your proposed solution for that. And for that, we have the system correlation detection. So that helps you to detect in which part of your PV plant are you having this, this problem. Is a problem of the transformer of the cities or is a problem in the stream box or panel level, wherever. So it's needed this uh, root cause analysis to identify uh, where is being this underperforming uh, or origin. Uh, it's also very um, um, value for for the client to identify the loss quantifications, uh, and this can extrapolate into money, and uh, then analysis of the costs and recommendation to improve itself. Okay, so this is the complete value proposal for the service taking advantage of the data and to bring new opportunity for that. Uh, now I'll moving on to our real case study that um, providing this service, we, we are, we, uh, it, uh, it happened to us, okay, with a uh, customer that we've been providing these services. Uh, thanks to, started to prepare these services to them, we detect the underperformance um, uh, we detected where are the best uh, months on, on the complete year for this location in this plant uh, in terms of productions. And uh, at the same time, uh, we detect that uh, one month that was, uh, you, you see like this, so from April to August was the best production um, month. And you see the irradiance, uh, accumulated irradiance. <coughs> In, in yellow, mm -hmm. but uh, and if you go for this month where the irradiance and the total energy um, producing by, was in the blue, you see that are more or less accurate. And uh, if you go into the deep into the data, uh, you see that the behavior of uh, this uh, plant in, within this month was very accurate to the optimal power curve of this uh, inverter. It means that the, this, this asset in this month were producing properly. In fact, we realized that in, in April, something mishap, mishap have happened. And in fact, the pattern of, uh, of performance of this month Start a deviation in in the dot in the in the behavior. So what happened there? So we detected that at the end was um, a maintenance operation that was done uh, without taking into consideration the the best month in terms of production to to be done. And thanks to analyze this in deep and know the impact. Uh, the, the clients uh, increase 4% of, of the incomes. Just going into a deep in some details with the numbers. So just the action of rescheduling the maintenance level, level of, from April to other months 
uh, increase 4% in the income of this uh, client. So just one of the um, benefits that this solution can bring into you. Uh, regarding isotrol timeline and uh, how we got, why we are now here uh, is because in, in isotrol uh, the innovation is the, the engine of worth. It's very very important innovation. In fact, uh, we started with machine learning and big data solutions since 2011, and uh, with different research and development projects. Uh, in 2017 was. Uh, establish the strategy of um, apply this advanced analytics and output of the algorithm and results into renewable to provide this service for operational excellence. Uh, we continue with some projects developing that and in this year, at the end of this year, in this uh, for, for the last quarter of the year, we, as, uh, we are ready to provide the, the band analytic, the Blue Ends Performance Diagnosis Services for uh, all, of, all of our customers. In fact, um, we are ready for WIN and PV. Today, I just uh, mentioned the PV par portfolio, portfolio case study. But uh, we also have a wide experience in wind uh, as a performance dia diagnosis. Uh, the next steps uh, is to continue growing the algorithm and problem detections in the, sus uh, in the different elements of the wind assets and um, PV assets, increase the functionalities of the services and uh, expand, expand uh, to other uh, technologies like uh, CSP or biomass and, for, and uh, to, to move in from uh, services provider into platform uh, provide tools instead to increase the, the functionalities of Bluens as a tool. Okay. Just uh, to conclude, uh, I reinforce the um, arguments that Miguel Angel said that the importance of gathering the information in real time, uh, the importance of the, to take into consideration in the CAPEX, the impact of the OPEX, and uh, up to now, with the information we have, we are, we are ready to really detect contextualize and, uh, and, uh, and, and provide an action plan uh, to make you more operational excellence. Just some reference, uh, all this we've even already provided for winds in more than uh, 280 turbines, uh, 450 megawatts in seven countries, five model of wind turbines, and for, P for PV, we have 80 megawatts uh, PV analy analyzed uh, with more than 100 inverter for models and five countries. Just feel free to contact me wherever you need. I hope that you have enjoyed with my presentations and um, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Stephanie. I think that was uh, very uh, interesting. Um, we <clears throat> we'll get right into some of the questions now that have been submitted by uh, participants. Um, uh, there's one from uh, Philippe, Felipe. What are the most important features to be monitored in a PV plant? Um, either Estefania or, or Miguel Angel, if you uh, could just give a quick update on, on those items. Uh, and um, the most important, uh, okay, is, that is a question that uh, the, the answer, the correct answer is for this, thinking that uh, Stefania and myself, we are people that are thinking in the innovation always, and that we are thinking always in the analytics of the data. The, uh, the correct answer for this is as soon as can. That is, sorry, uh, sorry, as much as too much, yes. If you can put 
sensors for everything that is better because the analytics is better. But the most important question is, there is a big, big, big uh, question now about the string inverters or central inverters. Okay, perfect. Doesn't matter. The important thing is that you can have, you must have the data for the strings because the strings is the closest uh, closest uh, device to the generation, to the stand. They, they, because uh, of, of course that the better situation is to have a sensor in every module, but this is impossible. Then the next situation is the strings. Don't have, if you don't have the string information, then I can, we, we together, Stefania or myself, whatever, this is not, that doesn't matter. We can demonstrate that the losses in the solar facilities, we can win more than three or four percent only with this information because we have done and we can see. The second one, of course, is the inverters. The inverters is the main topic because it is the is where the everything is happened, no? But for example, the transformers. There is a lot of because the pressure of the cappers is always the same. There is a lot of installation that is not putting temperature is as something tan, something uh, so important and so very cheap like a temperature proof in the te in the transformers that means that if we don't have the data for the temperature of the transformer in one year maybe we can know how much is the life of this transformer of course that's pyranometers uh, uh, in all the all the meteorological devices is important, but the question is that as much as much sensors you can have in a field, this is the the best uh, the, the, the best me, better picture you have of the solar facilities. I, I, I mentioned in my presentation that in the eolic sector there is, or for example, in the biogas or the uh, combi combined cycles installations. There is no chance. There is a lot of sensors. Why in the photovoltaic no? It's, in a, it's an industrial. It's an industrial solar generation. Sorry, sorry. It's, una, it's, it's an industrial generation system, like the eolic or like the stankel combined cycle or other. Why we eliminate or we can take out the sensors to know what is happening in the solar facilities because. Uh, we don't know really. The capex pressure is so much. That is the question. That is my opinion. Eh? Okay. May I ask something um, regarding from from? I completely agree that uh, uh, it's important to have information of the key aspect and just to uh, put the strong point in some of from our experience. Where are the key point for that? Uh, there are different signals that are that uh, will contribute a lot to identify problems in the PV uh, plants and uh, are, for example, the temperatures in the inverter, uh, the ventilations, the cooling, the air cooling that you have there, uh, having information at the inverter level regarding temperature and this, this brings a lot of information that uh, may help you, may help us to, to identify problems. Regarding the, um, the surface uh, temperature in panels, it also gives you a lot of information of the behavior of the panel itself and the problem that they may, it may have. Uh, another key uh, signal are, for example, an inverter level, the DCC power uh, that brings you the inverter performance, so an accurate measure of uh, DC and AC. It helps to identify if the deviations that we found is due to a real underperformance or is just a calibration of the C of the sensor. So to accurate this measure is also very very uh, Great. helpful. Thank uh, thank you, Stephanie. I think those uh, highlight a lot of the uh, items. Uh, if you could please stop sharing your screen. I should, uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. And um, uh, there were a couple of questions about uh, string monitoring. Uh, some of them were uh, put in the chat box and things. Uh, so uh, the uh, 
there were answers provided for those and, and all of the uh, questions and answers in the chats uh, will uh, also, I believe, be sent to uh, all participants. Um, main challenges regarding the PV plants was a question, especially for those that were built uh, during the stressed CapEx time mm -hmm. and uh, things. Uh, there's a very detailed answer there that, uh, you know, it, it, uh, a lot of information was not available in plants that are already built and uh, therefore there's a possibility, a possibility I would say, that uh, they could retrofit some of those plants and probably get uh, uh, some increased uh, profitability. Uh, another uh, question that uh, popped up was, uh, is, is there a specific example of uh, something uh, that was detected by your system at a specific plant, maybe not ne necessarily mentioned, that you uh, that you could describe uh, what you know something that was easily uh, detected early and helped to improve the OPEC uh, of the plant. You know, just a quick you know item. And I did see that, I think, in both of your presentations, but there wasn't the detail exactly of what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, may I? May I read? Yes. Answer? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, the use of uh, artificial intelligence uh, to detect problem in PV, one of the samples that, um, that it can be used, used uh, is being uh, analyzing the um, information from the drones, the image, uh, thanks to uh, convolutional uh, ne neuronal networks. So it helps you to identify the heat points of uh, these thermal uh, pictures. And uh, this is one of the techniques that it's been used. Great, great. Uh, Miguel Ángel, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, you have to unmute. Yes, yes. I am. We have also some examples where the Intel, the intelligence artificial, the artificial, artificial intelligence can be used to do the improvement in the in the solar facilities. As um, in some of them, we can uh, know that uh, we we are doing the comparison between the uh, manufacturers' uh, data sheet or manufacturers' uh, data about the uh, specific device, and we have done uh, with machine learning at the, uh, techniques or technologies, we are doing and um, we're searching for patterns that can be uh, always the same. And then if you, if you are, if, for example, when we are detecting some alarm in the, in, the, in the inverter or in the inverter, transformer, whatever, we take two hours before, two hours later. And then we, we save this in the, in, the, in the machine. And then after, if the same alarm is, is happened, we take again the same information and we do the comparison. Then the machine is, is if there is a pattern that can be uh, the same, then the machine is learning that there is a pattern of this. And then the, the next time our recommendation engine say, okay, the pattern that is coming of data, maybe you can have, maybe you can have this problem because the prediction is like the ball of the magic ball. The prediction is so difficult. I, when somebody tell me that he, is, uh, he can do the prediction or something, just I say, okay, please, please, wait a minute, because we are, looking, we are talking about a lot of variables that is, uh, that is happening in a solar facilities. But if you have two patterns that is the same, you can say at least a recommendation engine that say, okay, there is a problem, and the next five times, or the, the, the sorry, the before uh, 10 or 20 times, you have the same problem with the same uh, uh, pattern, you know? That is some techniques. You, we have done that, this in some um, facilities, and we can know that there is, a, they, this is a solution right. for that, you know? Excellent, excellent. Uh, I think uh, between the answer that you both gave there, it, it kind of hit on uh, two questions that uh, anonymous attendee 
uh, put in, one asking uh, a, an example of artificial intelligence used to detect a problem, and the other uh, maybe early detection keys that might have uh, uh, might improve uh, OPEX. So that's good. Uh, I see we also had a question uh, just come in from uh, Philippe uh, asking, uh, what about soiling? Is, is that something that uh, uh, can be detected, can be modeled, uh, can participate in this automation? Put your mic on, Miguel. Uh, I have to say something about this. Uh, in a, in a, one of our experience about analytics, we can see that sometimes the people uh, is doing things that is repetitive things that is only because is uh, in the schedule of operation and maintenance, they have this, the, the schedule they have, I have to clean, I have to put out the, 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 the uh, sorry, the yerbas, I don't know, the, the herbs or the, the plants. Weeds. I have the weeds. Yes, I, I have to put out, I have to, yes, but there is some solutions that is so, so important to think. Why you have to do that if you don't win anything? Because when you do the analytics, you can see that sometimes the, 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 the money or the production that you win after cleaning of the panels is only for one day. Because after this, or two days, and then after this, the problem is that you are in the same position that you are, you, you was when before the cleaning. Then how much cost the cleaning of the plant? A lot. How do you have to clean something if you don't need? This is the situation that the analytics can help to do that. Because sometimes the comparison between how much you win, for example, $2,000, Perfect. How much cost clean, the clean? Uh, $4,000, then you are losing money. This is one of the things that we are talking about the soiling, about the cleaning, about everything. Sometimes before, before we have to do that, we have to think about that. And the only thing, the only question that we can, assure, that we can be sure that is, you have a long-term warehouse of data, you have the possibility to do the analysis, the analytics of this data and do conclusions to win money. That is clear. I think that Stefania and myself, we are very sure about this because we are taking data from uh, solar, uh, in our case, more in the solar sector, but uh, we, take, we take data and then we are anal doing analytics. And then sometimes uh, I, I agree with the, with, with, uh, the, the when Estefania said that we can win more than 4% of production or money in a solar plant with analytics. That is absolutely clear. And the solar sector must think about this, but it's so difficult because in our case, we have solutions to, uh, we have, we are the, one of the, I think is one of the most important uh, manufacturers of combined box in the, in the solar sector. And then we have this, this product with monitoring system is our own uh, monitoring system. And then we are collecting the important, which is the importance of uh, the string converters. I give you, so I give, I, I would like to give you an example. Only in some facilities, the operation maintain, uh, it is true because it's uh, based in our data. In some of the facilities, the operation of maintenance takes more than two hours two hours to go to do a reset in an inverter. And now bodies of the promoters and the people, the financial and everybody knows nothing about this. If you have the analytics of the data and you have, it's like you have 30 engineers or 14 or whatever, doing analytics every minute, every two minutes or day by day, it's the same. But what happens if you go, if you take two hours to do a reset of the inverters. Maybe you are losing in a central inverter of four megawatts, a lot of money. The promoters, the financial people know something about this? No. Then when you do the, as Stefania mentioned before, when you transform these losses in money, the people say, my God, 
what is the situation. Analytics is the innovation and the key in the facilities of solar. That is clear. Maybe the people uh, don't understand this or they are thinking in the capex, but 20 years of OPEX, a fair percent of improvement in a solar facility of 100, mega, 100 megawatts is with a normal tariff, with a normal price, more than around $1 million per year. Thinking about this, how much cost the, the sensor fields? How much cost the improvement of uh, uh, to put more sensors and more data? That is the question. I think is uh, I think that every every in in this chat everybody is uh, agree with this, no? But uh, sometimes the solar sector is thinking in another things is different. Very good. Thank you, Miguel. Um, Stephanie and Miguel, uh, we're, we're getting close to uh, the end of the time, but I have one other question here uh, that I'd like both of you to address. Um, and it's uh, most, most of what you've talked about has been collection of data at an operating plant and how to make that plant, let's say, more efficient, more profitable, et cetera. Um, do, do either of you or, uh, ha or either of your companies, can, is there any gain to getting involved in the design stage uh, with the information that you have or during the construction stage as opposed to only looking at, you know, is there a benefit that could be gained by, uh, you know, your information being fed into the, the suppliers and designers of these? And maybe, uh, uh, Stephanie, if you could start uh, with that and then uh, Miguel close it out. Sure, this is uh, uh, definitely uh, as soon as sooner as you start to think about the use of the information and uh, the goal you want to reach and you take into consideration at the very beginning of the construction of the plant, at better analysis you will get and uh, strike to the goal you will be. In fact, with uh, some of our clients uh, that are uh, acquiring new plants under constructions, they already are taking the re these requirements for analytics since the very beginning. And uh, also in the teams, uh, in our offer, when we offer the, our blue insulation monitoring and control system for new plants, we also have uh, include in, in our bidding offer uh, the, the minimum uh, information that we have to gather to provide different services uh, as uh, the one we are uh, presenting right now. So it's already a reality. Insotrol is already working in this line and as, as, as better you understand the need and as, as sooner you start to doing things uh, will uh, reach the goal easier and faster. Thank you, uh, Stefania. Miguel, Miguel Angel. Yes, uh, yes. Um, that is a very good question because uh, some of our customers, as uh, Stefania mentioned, is looking for how we how they can do to win the the auction in a country, or how we can be, do a better uh, uh, knowledge about the the, the 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 difference between the production that I think that I, I, I can have or the production that you have, that you have only to think about this. If we have the information of different countries and we have the information of different environments and we have the information of the, how the products of different brand is, is doing different, uh, uh, situ uh, how they uh, works in different situations, then we have the information that maybe this provider is or supplier is better for this, and this supplier is better for that. But you have, we, but we, I want to do this something more important. The solar market accept that the PVCs, the software that the people use to do the calculation for the solar facilities, is one of them. But this is the most important, I think. Everybody that can have the data from analytics knows that the uh, PVCs is 
conservative. Then the, the real situation is that the production is a little bit more than the, PV, uh, the PVC's um, calculations. Then, if you have the data of a lot of different is installations with a lot of different situations, then you can compare this. This is one of the things that we do. We compare the initial and the financial um, uh, calculations where the capex is based and then now put here the real situation and then we compare and then say okay maybe you are a 10 percent more or five percent more then when you can do this in 100 installation then you can take some decisions maybe i can be i can go to the auction or to the b or to do the bid a little bit less because I know that the PVC is, is, has a difference of 5%. That is the situation. The situation, again, is data and analytics. And okay. for data and analytics, we need sensors and control, that is. Excellent. So uh, I think we've pretty much uh, run out of time. Uh, I certainly want to thank all of the uh, participants. Uh, thank, uh, of course, our two panelists. Uh, I don't know whether Estefania uh, and Miguel, would you like to say anything uh, before we uh, close down? No? Yes? No? Yes, uh, thank you very much for having the opportunity to present uh, the results here. And to feel free to contact us wherever you need. We'll open to collaborate. Great. Thank you. Uh, I think the uh, same that Estefania said. But, uh, and uh, I want to say something more. We are two companies here. We are two Spanish companies here. We are two Spanish companies that, at, if you can see, see uh, the presentation is okay, they are competitors. No, we are two Spanish companies in the, in the, in the, in the most technology, looking for technology at doing innovation in the solar facilities because the world is very big. And the Spanish companies is on, uh, is, is, the, is the forward on, on the innovation and looking for solution. This is the important thing. We are not competitors. We are people that we are thinking to improve the solar, the solar installations and the solar market. That is clear. Excellent remarks, Miguel. It's, uh, I worked in Spain for six years and I know that even though there's companies that are competing against each other, they are also uh, helping each other uh, along the way. So again, thank you to all the participants. We look forward to uh, seeing you again at future ATA Insights uh, webinars. Uh, a number of those were announced uh, in the chat box. And uh, with that, I'd say we'll, we'll close off the webinar. Thanks again uh, to the panelists.